All right, so we are ready to wire all the classes and logic together. And we can do that in class, which I'll call race. And we need to instantiate the objects for the track, turtles and hare. However, we do not need to keep a separate instance of the turtles and hare because we already have them added to the list of all runners. So all the object information we need, we already have available to us. We do need a separate instance of the track class though, so I'll create a variable for that. And we also need to know when the race finished, so I'll create a boolean variable for that. And in the race class constructor, we can instantiate the objects. Now we still need to instantiate the turtles and hair objects, because if you remember, we are passing the starting position, the lane number, and the name of the runner into the classes constructors. So those are the 0, 0 and turtles would be the name. So for hair it's 0, 1, which is the column, and hair, which is the name. And because the race is just starting, I initialize the race over boolean to false by default. Next, we need to set up the race right before it actually starts. So I'm going to create a method and call it setup race. Now, all we want to do at this point is to assign each runner his position on the track. And that is done in the track class. Over here, you can see the runner position. And uh, notice that we are passing the object of type runner as argument. So back to our race class. So to assign the position for each runner, we can simply loop through the list of all runners and for each runner call the runner position method in the track class and pass the runner as an argument as we loop through each one. So I'm using a simple for loop and I have my runner dot all runners, which is the list of all runners. So now all we have to do is, like I said, call the runner position and pass the runner that we are currently looping through as the argument. So I have my truck class, I'm calling the runner position and passing the runner as an object, as an argument. And next, we can display the move description for each runner. So if you look at turtles, for example, by default, at the beginning, we'll display turtles is ready, set and go. And after that, as we are moving through the board, the moves will be fast plot or slip or slow plot. And the same for the rabbit, just different moves, of course. So we can simply display the move description in a new line. So as we loop through the runners, we get the move description for each of them. So currently there's only two and display them. So that will display the messages. But next, we also need to display the racetrack. And the racetrack for the setup race will simply be the turtles and uh, the hair and the starting positions with the move description as ready, set, go, and the blank racetrack. So after the loop, we'll simply call the display racetrack from the track as object. All right, another method we need is to figure out who the winner is. After the race ends, each runner will have a certain position, and the runner, or runners, because there could be several runners who reach the finish line at the same time, so all these runners should be displayed as winners. So I have my method get place. So here we can loop through our list, but only pick the runners that have the current position in the finish line. So I'm going to use another for loop and loop through the list of all runners. And inside the body, we can create an if statement and check if the current position for the runner is finish line. And the finish line is the last index of the track, which is the track length. So we'll simply ask if the runner's current position equals the track length. And if it is, then we'll simply display the runner's name and say that the runner is a winner. And then we'll loop through the next runner, and if that one happens to be at the finish line at the same time, we'll display his name as well. All right, and now we're finally ready to create a loop that will control the race. So let's create a method that will contain all the necessary logic for that. So the first thing we need to do is to set up the race at the beginning we will call it the setup race and it will set up the runners and the truck and then we will start the race after we press a key. So now we have our runners in their starting position and we are ready to start the race. I am going to use a do while loop to control the race and the race will continue until, well, until it's over. So we have our 
race over boolean and we will check if it's uh, false or true meaning we will check if the race is still going on or if it's over so in the while we will simply check if the race over is false and if it is we will keep looping because that means that the race is not over yet now inside the do loop we want to be able to view each round on the screen and move to the second round after we press a key on the keyboard so before we refresh the screen we want to pause the screen for us to be able to view it and i'm simply going to use a scanner and a scanner next line to control the flow of the game or of the race so i'm creating my scanner and i'm waiting for the user input which is to press the button before we actually start running the race all right so we pause the screen press the button and now we start in the race so to generate random move and to move the runners into their new positions we can simply use the for loop again and loop through the list of all runners and inside the loop the next thing we need to actually calculate the move that the runner needs to make in other words we need to generate the random number for each of the runners so I'm going to call the calculate move method from the runner class. You can see that the calculate move is abstract and for example turtle has the calculate move set up uh, for fast plot, slip and slow plot based on the percentages. So we will randomly generate the move and then we will pass it into our race for each of the runners. So once the move is generated we need to update the runner's position so i will call the runner position just like we did before in our setup when we use the track runner position and pass the runner in it as an argument so this will place the runner on the new spot on the track and after the runner is on the new spot we can display what uh, move the runner actually made so we can kind of verify it visually that our program is running correctly and also for the player to see how the runner is performing so that is our basically each of the moves for each runner and after each move we need to verify if any player reached the finish line and won the race so we'll simply use the if statement and we will call the is winner from the runner class let me look at that you can see over here this method checks if the runner reached the track length which is the last index on the track and if so then it returns true because the race is over one of the runners or at least one of the runners won so we can simply use an if statement and check if the is winner is returning true or false so we'll call the is winner method pass the runner and if it's true meaning the race is over then we will set our race over variable to true and notice I'm still within the loop because I want to check this for each runner because again we can have multiple winners and of course after each runner is assigned new position we want to display it on our racetrack so I will call the display racetrack method and that is after the for loop finishes and every runner finished his or her move and after the loop our do loop finishes meaning the race is over then we want to set the get place method or call it so we can display who the winner is so i'll simply call the get place method after our while loop finished all right we are basically finished now we just have to create an instance of our race object and all other objects are created from within the race class so we only need this one object in our main method so i have my object and now i'll just have to call the racing method to start the race all right we are ready to finally see the epic race and we'll do it in the next video and i will also show you how easy it is to extend the race by adding another runner or how to modify the racetrack so i will see you in the next video